Procedures that assist to manipulate oocytes outside the body are referred to as assisted reproductive technology. In vitro fertilization, short IVF, is the most common form of it. In vitro means nothing more than inside a glass. The oocytes are literally fertilized by sperm in a petri dish. How a typical IVF protocol is performed will be the focus of today's video. Before we start, please subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to stay updated. Robert Edwards and Patrick Steptoe reported the first live birth from IVF in 1978, which would later earn them the Nobel Prize in Medicine. Today, IVF accounts for approximately 2% of all live births in the United States and the technique assists even more couples in Europe that have difficulties getting pregnant. Usually, the process of IVF begins with ovarian stimulation. Multiple protocols have been developed, but they all have one aim in common. The stimulation of the ovaries to produce multiple eggs. Therefore, the woman takes medications such as the follicle stimulating hormone or human menopausal gonadotropin, or in some cases even both. In addition, gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs are given to block the physical luteinizing hormone surge, thus temporarily blocking ovulation. This allows physicians to better time the oocyte retrieval. The step of ovarian stimulation is done so that approximately 10 to 20 oocytes are retrieved. During that time, the oocyte growth is monitored using ultrasound. When the eggs have sufficiently matured, often defined as when at least three follicles reach 18 mm in size, the human chorionic gonadotropin injection is administered to induce ovulation. The next step is oocyte retrieval. Regardless of the stimulation procedure, mature oocytes are retrieved around 35 hours after HCG injection. This is performed using anesthesia. Guided by a transvaginal ultrasound, the physician inserts a needle through the vagina into the ovaries to remove eggs from each follicle. What follows is fertilization in a petri dish. Before, the semen sample is prepared by isolating sperm using centrifugation and washing them in medium with a high protein concentration to promote capacitation, a process essential for sperm to be able to fertilize the oocyte. Up to 100,000 sperm are incubated together with an oocyte for up to 18 hours. Male factor infertility may require a different approach, where one immobilized sperm is directly injected into the oocyte. This bypasses the challenge for the sperm to penetrate the zona pellucida, a barrier surrounding the oocyte. After fertilization, the eggs will divide. The embryos are cultured and grown in a lab for the first two to five days. Only after that, they will be transferred into the uterus. This is achieved by transabdominal ultrasound guidance and a catheter passing through the cervix. The embryo or embryos are placed 1 to 2 cm from the uterine fundus. The number of embryos transferred will depend on the embryo stage, embryo quality and maternal age. Usually only one, in some cases up to two or three embryos are transferred. After that, progesterone may be prescribed a hormone that increases the thickness of the uterine lining, which should improve the chances that the embryo will attach to it and grow. Under some circumstances, including genetic disorders, high maternal age or recurrent pregnancy loss, a technique known as pre-implantation genetic diagnosis can be used to screen the embryo for chromosomal or genetic abnormalities. If you want to know more about the technique, check out this video here. In case you are interested in how a sperm fertilizes an oocyte without assistance, I've made a video about it. You can check that out too. Thanks for watching.